Welcome back to Control. I think we're on episode seven, and uh, we're we're kind of moving through into the mail area, but we have a couple of problems. There's some glowy lights over here, glowy red stuff. It's not it's not gonna let us through. Um, it's magically delicious. It won't uh, it won't let us pass. And there's some shelter over here, and I have a feeling it's gonna be equally useless. Nope, this shelter's clean. A lot of the shelters are full of, like, fungus and crap like that. I don't think this shelter was ever used by anybody, so it's anyone's guess as to why there's treasure in it. I don't see any signs that people have been in here. So, what we're really supposed to do is get lured in by this poor dead guy into the pneumatics room. Bum, bum, bum. Object of power. Looks like the hiss have latched onto it. We need to cleanse it. There's a lot to say about this room, but let's go ahead and clear it first. Now they're trying to teach you how to like hide behind stuff, but even if you're not invincible or immortal, generally speaking, this guy is not very dangerous if you're on the move. Uh, I got pretty unlucky, got a couple of hits against me, but you know, it's not gonna do anything. Now it's time for tutorials! <laughs> So I don't particularly like these tutorial levels. Um, I think I'm on record as saying that, but it's been a couple of takes, uh, so I'm not sure if I said it in this set of videos. These tutorial levels are crap. Um, they look ugly, they're boring, they feel bad. They're definitely the worst part of the game to me. What? Where the fuck did you get that from? There we go. So, uh... I'm never really happy to see them. I understand they need to teach you how to use things, but it seems like it's like super basic. It's like, what is the most primitive way we could teach this? And they said, oh, well, let's go ahead and do a level of a different indie game where you're jumping from rock to rock in the sky. And everybody else said, oh, fantastic idea. No one's going to get bored of that. Oh wait, I can just shoot these guys, can't I? We'll try it in a second here. Oh, I can. That makes this easy. Let me just go ahead and do some shooterific stuff. Um. Oh, come on. Whatever. You can see that the fling is uh, amazing. It works absolutely perfectly every time. There's never been any problems with it getting stuck and refusing to actually fire at the targets and wasting all of your energy and getting you killed. And that's certainly not why I've turned on Immortality, because it happened 80 or, 80 or 90 times in my first playthrough. How do I switch sides? I can't remember. I guess it doesn't matter. So, although I skip these and talk smack about them, uh, the basic concepts here are pretty good, and there's really no problems with you were gone. the un the way that these things give you better understandings of what's going on like is pretty wanted, good. Right? This will help you fight the hiss. Oh, you're up there. Okay. How you doing, dude? I think that's everybody. Yeah, it's fine. So now we can talk about this room, which is one of my favorites. Um, I love this room to pieces. So what this room is, is it's the pneumatics room. All of these things are pumps that draw in a tremendous amount of air and then, you know, pull the, all of the air through all of the pneumatic tubes throughout the system. So here we've got all these beautiful silver tubes coming up, coming over here. And they're sort of implied to do this job here with all of these tubes coming into this central chamber. This isn't some kind of magical sorting chamber. This is where the air goes. And uh, I think it works fantastic. It looks amazing. One of the things about it that makes it look best is the way that they've been very careful to backlight this. 
This shining backlight really shows off the subsurface scattering effect on these tubes. It really makes them look like they're made out of a soft rubber or plastic. Uh, and it makes them feel alive. I think it's, it's an amazing choice. It's halfway between something that you might see in a building and an eldritch horror. And that's exactly what they were aiming for. Job well done. I'm drooling. It's so good. Hmm. Not everything about it is 100% is on the level, though. It's clear that they were rushed from time to time. For example, a lot of these pipes don't really hook up, and maybe that's on purpose. Um, a lot of these pipes have very, very sharp, obvious turns in them where the, the, uh, the loop count, there weren't enough loop cuts, so they've got some really sharp angles. Um, and, you know, that kind of bothers me a little bit, but the visual is spectacular. I love it. I can complain about details all day, and I probably will, but uh, it's important to realize that the overall structure was brilliant, and the impression it leaves is brilliant. Because this is a pneumatics chamber, it's full of like pipe leftovers and stuff to help that sort of thing, grease and all sorts of, of stuff like that. I think this room serves its purpose really well when the player understands what it's for. The first time I came here, I didn't realize it was the pneumatics room, and it took me a long time to figure out what the heck was up. I was very confused, but uh, I was still impressed by the visual. I just didn't understand what I was looking at. Uh, these machines are reused everywhere throughout the game in various formats and pieces. Uh, they, they have a visual they like, and they stick to it. In this case, though, it's worth noting just how vivid the metal is in the light. It really looks alive, doesn't it? Look at that. And I think that that is a wonderful trick. I think it has more to do with... I think that that metal might have some... I, I don't want to go out on a limb too much, but it feels like it's got some post-processing or subsurface scattering on it to make it feel a little bit more meat-like. Um... But it could also just be that they were careful with the with the roughness values and stuff. Well, it would be interesting to to get in a discussion with uh, with one of the devs and talk about that in detail. It's always like, I wonder how much of this is on purpose and how much of this was just iterating until they found something that looked good and then sticking to it without thinking too hard. You know, it's hard to tell. So, previously we couldn't get through here, now we can. We just shoot a guy a couple of times. Magic. Now we're into the mail sorting area. Emily said that the hotline can be reached through the mail room. I love visuals like this, a really bright light at the end of the tunnel, putting aside any uh, uh, death-related uh, concepts. It's just a really good way to pull the player forward. A dark spot than a bright spot. I love all of these pipes, and I've, I haven't, I don't think I've talked about this yet because it hasn't come up yet, but this is a game about pipes. The way that they use pipes is spectacular, and we're going to go over it in considerable detail. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about these mail sorting rooms first. So these mail sorting rooms are very straightforward square rooms and they don't have any mail sorting elements on the walls. See, the walls are just this sound baffling panels. Um, and I presume these are sound baffling panels. That's what they look like to me. Uh, if they're not, I'd be interested in knowing what they are. But these, these rooms don't have like mail elements on the walls. Every part of these, these rooms that are mail related are standing in the middle of the room. And that sort of implies that these rooms are generally, you know, just general purpose uh, meshes, general purpose room modules that were, you know, just used in this area and the mail room elements could be slotted in without too much effort. So I bet these rooms were pretty quick to come together uh, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. I think if there had been all of these mail sorting thingies on the walls, it would have felt super claustrophobic, so it would have been interesting to see. I bet they did a version like that, and then decided it didn't look right. 
these rooms are lit by the offices upstairs. You can see how those lights come down in here. It's exactly the same thing that we've been talking about. One of these edges has a raised light drop, a light well, and then it just echoes into the rest of the room, which is quite dark. This is the same basic techniques over and over and over, but they never get old and they always look great. Here's the other one. I think there's a treasure chest in here too, but the rooms are functionally identical. I mean, they vary a little bit, but not to the extent that anybody would notice. There's the loot. Now it's been 10 minutes, so we're going to stop here, and in the next episode, we're going to talk about pipes. My favorite topic. Pipes. Glorious pipes. See you soon.